Now let's look at how to design a transistor circuit to operate at a specific point on your load line. The objective here is design a circuit with an NPN transistor in it, bias it so it's in the middle of the active region. I'd also like to stabilize the cue point for variations in the gain, HFE or beta. That's important because if you look at the data sheets for transistors, like for a 2N222, the gain is 200 plus or minus 100. That's quite a bit of variation, and that's going to affect your operating point. Now, the basic circuit we're going to be using is the one shown on the right. The purpose of the different resistors are as follows. R1 and R2 set the current into the base of the transistor. Think of it, they create a Thevenin equivalent where I've got a voltage source and a resistance driving the base. As I vary the voltage and resistance, I can vary the base current. That controls the collector current adjusting where you are on the load line. The collector resistor, RC, converts current to voltage. Transistors are current amplifiers. If you want to get a voltage out to drive a speaker, say, I need something that converts current to voltage. That's a resistor. RE we'll look at very shortly. That stabilizes the cue point for variations in the gain. The capacitors decouple the circuit to DC. Essentially, what we're going to do is design the circuit for a specific cue point, say right in the middle of the load line, and then use that uh, circuit to amplify an AC signal. When I do that, I don't want the AC signal for my iPad, say, to change the cue point because I just went to a lot of trouble designing for that cue point. Capacitors decouple your circuit at DC so the outside world has no effect on your design at DC. And again, the trick we're going to be using quite often is a Thevenin equivalent. Take your R1 and R2 from this circuit, these guys, along with your power supply. Take the Thevenin equivalent, and I can have a much simpler circuit, B Thevenin, R Thevenin, driving the base of your transistor. Let's start with a simple case. Suppose I have the emitter resistor 0, R2 0, and I just have this circuit right here. Uh, let's design so that I got a better pen. There's the collector emitter designed so that VC is 6 volts. Uh, well, to do that, I know that if that's 6 volts, collector current, I sub C, must be 6 milliamps. I've got 6 volts at the collector. Voltage drop across the 1K resistor must be 6 volts. 6 volts across 1K is 6 milliamps. Base current then, beta times IB is IC. That lets you solve for IB. I sub B is IC over beta. If beta is 200, you get you get 30 microamps. This voltage drop is 0.7 volts. That's a diode. Voltage drop across the silicon diode is 0.7. The remainder must be across that 377K resistor. It's 11.3 volts. I can find that value of that resistor. I've got 11.3 volts, 30 microamps. That together is with the 377K. That's how I came up with that 377K resistor. That specifies the Q point. Problem with that design. The gain of a transistor, say if that's the 2N222, the gain is somewhere between 100 and 300. Nominally, it's 200. That's what I designed for. Could vary quite a bit. What happens to the Q point if I take into account the variations in beta? In addition, my resistors are not exact. Suppose I use 1% resistors. How do I look at the variations in the Q point, taking into account the resistors tolerance and the gain tolerance? Before that, there's a thing called the Monte Carlo simulation. What you do is just pick. Pick a random number for the resistance such as if the base resistance is ideally 37, 377 kilo ohms, I'm going to modify that by 1%. 
and MATLAB, the RAND function, generates a number between 0 and 1. If I multiply by 2 and subtract 1, that gives me a random number between minus 1 and plus 1. If I multiply by 0.01 and add 1, that gives you altogether plus or minus 1%. So I now have RB is a resistor which is nominally 377 kilo ohms, give or take 1%. RC, likewise, is going to make it nominally 1 kilo ohm, plus or minus 1%. Beta is nominally 200, plus or minus 100%, plus or minus 100. Once I have that, I can then calculate your Q point. In the procedure being, calculate the base current. Current through resistor RB is 11.3 volts divided by RB. IC is beta times IB. PC is your 12 volts minus drop across RC. I now have my Q point, VC and IC. Let's plot that. The Monte Carlo simulation says if I do that for one point, I get one possible value for the circuit if I built it. Repeat that for a large number, and I get kind of a picture of the spread. What that looks like is as follows. This is VCE. Here's your IC. My nominal Q point was right in the middle. That's where it's supposed to be. In practice, because of variations in data, it could be anywhere as shown on the blue dots. This is a problem. If I wanted to go into production and build an amplifier, I'm going to have real problems with quality control. I could be close to saturation. I could be close to off. I'd like to come up with a way to minimize that spread, come up with a more consistent manufacturing process. That's what the emitter resistor is for. Turns out, if you look in your textbook or the lecture notes, if I throw in the emitter resistor and I pick it so that 1 plus beta RE is much, much bigger than RB, where RB is your theremin equivalent of R1 and R2. My Q point is almost constant in spite of variations in beta. So let's go through a design example. Suppose I want to design so that VC is 6 volts. How do I come up with R1, R2, and VE? Ideally, I want RC to be 1K. That's usually given. I've got an amplifier. I've got a certain load, output impedance. I want it to be right in the middle of the Q point with 1 kilo ohm output impedance. Find R1, R2, RE or the seven equivalent, find VB, RB, and RE. Well, RE, I'd like to be zero. If it's non-zero, that limits how much the voltage drop can, can change at VC. I don't want it to be exactly zero, though, because then I can't stabilize the Q point. So let's pick something small, say 10% of RC, 100 ohms. Once I specify that, I know IC should be 6 milliamps. I know IB times beta is IC, just like before. IB winds up being 30 microamps. To stabilize the Q point, I want 1 plus beta I, RE be greater than RB, meaning that RB it's much, much less than 20 kilo ohms. Okay, beta is 200, RE is 100 ohms, 1 plus beta RE is 20 kilo ohms. So let RB be 2 kilo ohms. I now know everything in the loop except for VB. So I can solve for VB. E sub B is the voltage drop across the 2K resistor, RB, is 2K times IB times 30 microamps plus 0.7. I know we can point 0.7 there. Plus the voltage drop across RE. One plus beta 
IB gives you VB. If you're done, you wind up with VB, or Vthevenin is 1.36 volts, Rthevenin is 2K. To implement that, I go backwards. Find R1 and R2, and VCC is 12 volts. So the Vthevenin equivalent of the left circuit is 1.36 volts for Vthevenin, 2K for Rthevenin. For that, I need two, equa two equations, two unknowns. Uh, one of them is by voltage division, R2 over R1 plus R2 times 12 volts is 1.36 volts, one equation. Second equation is R1 in parallel with R2 is 2K. Solve those two equations for two unknowns, and you get R1 and R2. The result is R1 is 17.6 kilo ohms. R2 is 2256 ohms. Now that you've got that, let's see what happens when you vary beta. Okay, let's do a Monte Carlo simulation. I'm going to let all the resistors vary by 1%. Oops, try that again. Vary by 1%. Let beta vary by 100. Calculate the voltages, resistances, and plot them. Plot the voltage and current on a load line. Looks like this. Note that before, the spread was anywhere between 2 volts and about 9 volts. By adding the emitter resistor, the spreads dropped drastically. It's not zero, but it's a whole lot better. That's the reason we have emitter resistors and amplifiers. So now we can actually design a circuit to place the cue point wherever you want and stabilize that cue point. What we'll look at next is couple that circuit to an AC source.